Hello and welcome back to part 5 of the online exam system tutorials using CSharp.net MVC technologies. My name is Nelvin Amos. If you remembered in the last video we learned how to register new user to the system. We also learned how we can register the users to take test. We can check the validity of the test and few things that we wanted to do take control in terms of the user and their registration. In this video, we will learn how to create the exam page, which is the page where we display the questions and answers. It's a little bit big in terms of the scope that we wanted to discuss in this video because the page consists of Pagination, displaying the questions, setting up timers, and setting up the model for the question and answer page so that the users can choose and submit. Well, many things are there in this topic, and I'm not sure if we can cover up in just a few 15 or 20 minutes video. So let's try to cover as much as possible in this one. And then we will try to cover up in the second part of this video if we cannot finish in one video here. So primarily, we will try to establish the framework the foundation that is required to have the question and answer page. Basically the pagination, getting the data done, and getting the models ready. All right, let's start. So the first thing I wanted to do here is generate a page navigator so that we can go to any page that we want. So here, what I will do is I will display the, the question number because if you go here, you see that by default, whenever you go to a real page and when there is no token at all, then you will automatically get the first question. Let's see if we get any. So where do we get it? We're being given a model. So what we'll do is add model equals online exam dot models dot question model. All right, let's see if we get the model right. Model dot question a question dot okay, so let's see what we get. Oops, so we get an issue here. Wow, nice. So that's exactly what we need to fix. So let's see, where is the error? Where is this model declared? The model is a test exclusion question model with first or default. With options also specified. So this is definitely question model dot question model. We're we getting this. Okay, I'm sorry. So this is where the problem is. We should not be returning view, but we should be returning a redirect to action of evaluation page. It is not executing this page. That was the problem. Okay. So now that we have fixed that. Okay, register and start. All right, that's very good. So the question that we have here is in HTML format. So we get exactly what we're looking for. So we must be able to get a few other information like model.questionID or um, model.question model number. So which question number is this? We're getting question number one. Okay, so we're going to try to make a meaningful representation of this one. Before that, if you go here and say Q number equals two, let's see what we get. Do we get the right question? Question number two. Let's see if we get three. I believe we do get the right information the way we expect. And as these questions are in HTML, we have to use HTML row to represent them in the right HTML format. Okay, so now I would suggest that we start by creating the pagination, that is the paging, so that we, we don't have to necessarily always keep on typing on the URL bar. For that, I will introduce the logic 
And to save time, I will copy the existing code that I have already created once I'm done explanation, once I'm done explaining. So what I would try to do is I would try to create a table, which is a, a, a properly formatted table, and I'll put a TR, okay? Now, the number of columns that I will have, just like if you look at this, the number of columns that you will have, uh, TDs, divisions that you'll have, depends on the number of total questions in this test, right? So let's find out. How can we can do that? To do that, we need to go here in the controller, wherever we're retrieving the, the page, we need to make sure that we return the total number of questions in this set. So what do we do? Before we return the model, we make sure that this model dot total questions in set equal to context dot text x questions dot where x is it x dot question dot is active I'm just taking on the active questions the test ID is equal to whatever is the currently the registration dot test ID dot count so this will give me a total number from the test mapping in this test how many questions were there for this test all right and um, let's go back to the evolution page and now we already have the question number I'm building it once again before um, we do anything so let's see at 4 integer i equals 0 i is less than model dot question num the question total question in set i plus plus I think this sounds good then what we will do is we'll put an ID and let's put I plus one so this should tell us how many pages we need to render let's check it out all right because every time we build it the session got expired and the new session gets recreated so it makes sense to go back so here if you can see you see one two three four five fourteen so we get whatever that we need. All we need to do is we need to convert this one into an URL that makes sense, right? So let's do one and then the remaining, we will paste the existing code. So here what we will do is we will say HTML dot, or in fact, I would want it to rather use the URL dot XM. Okay, this one, this helper class will render an anchor tag in HTML. So I want to go to evil page. In the evil page, what are the parameters that I want it to pass? If you look at this, we are passing the token. And along with that, we want it to pass the question number. So at token, this is where the session data comes into picture. Token and question number equals, what is it? Here it should be i plus one. All right, so let's see what we got. All right, so let's just put this as home control in the route values. Okay, so if you go, I'm getting the excellent pages, so which is very good. Evil. Everything looks very good. All I have to do now is convert them into a real HTML page. So I am going to put this one into a ref equals. I can put this one inside this. Inside all of this. The reason for putting this one again, if I if I may, is because I want to introduce all features that is possible you know we can always stick to html.xm link and then generate the html but sometimes that's not exactly what I want to do here because I wanted to customize styles and I wanted to do a, a few other things I'm not saying it's not possible but I think this is one way that we can do all right so if you refresh the page oops I'm sorry the I has to be in scripts. 
Oh, no, it's not here. It's gonna be here, right? And I will better put this one. That way things will be a lot reliable. Okay, so let's test this. Two, four, eight. The link's working. All well and good. So we don't have a problem. So I'm going to copy past the, the scripts that I've written here so that we can get things done faster. So if I have uh, this page, I'm going to replace all these things with a little better formatted design and this one is replaced with model.total questions so we'll say variable equals a model.total questions inset that should bring about the same result here check it out which is almost the same so I do not want this two information anymore if I remove this, we're almost very close. Now the next thing that we wanted to do here is if you refer the working tool, you see we have question and question ID. So let's work with that first. So what do we want to do? We just have to put in a simple HTML script, I'm sorry, a simple razor script again here. That will show us this. If we go. Questions ID, time remaining. Okay, this we will talk about it sometime later on. Now, okay, I wanted to move on to the next step where we decide what type of data that we wanted to work on. Say, for example, the question is a text type. How do we define? Let's check it out. So, at model dot question type, let's have a look. All right, so this question is a multiple type question. This one is radio, this one is text, and this one are all text, radio, text, and all. All right, let's say if, all right, if the multiple question type is equal to text or let's say radio basically the concept goes like this if it is radio so what I will do is for each all right for each variable item in the model dot choices or options all right and I wanted to introduce something called input type equal to checkbox and I wanted to put a label called item dot label put an add so that it gets the right information and else if model dot question type is equal to multiple all right if we go through this again and what do we want it to put here instead of checkboxes? We will put radio. I think I mixed up. I put the reverse. So radio, radio, multiple checkboxes. A third one else. Oops. Else if model dot question type equals text what do we want it to put we do not want to put any of this we just want it to put a simple text area item this is a text area let's find out wow all right, so this kind of looks very dirty a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll refine this one 
and say, let's put a bright point under everything. And let's refresh the page. All right, that looks a little better now. Okay, input, 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 type, check boxes. Um, radio buttons are not picking up properly. That's because I have put a wrong text there. Okay, radio, so it's here. Okay, so I think everything's working fine. For check boxes, we're getting check boxes rendered. Uh, for radio, we're getting radio rendered, and for text area, we're getting the text. Okay. The only thing we're missing now is the H the question. So we will add the question here. Well, as I said, I'm just going to simply dump everything so that we understand how it works. And end of the day, I'm going to post the um, the final code in a proper UI. Right now, all we care about is to get the job done, to get it to work. So this is going to be the question and I'm going to have to put brbr and then div class equal to row again. Inside the row is where I want to put all these questions. Let's look at it. All right, so there we go. We have everything here. Questions, text area. All good so now the next thing we wanted to do is to submit these results that is there into the server and we are done the first thing that we need to do when we are about to submit any form in MVC as per the ideal recommendation is to create a model so let's create the model for this Or let's say the choice of the user right let's call it choice model so in this one it's just a choice so prop the integer of the choice that is the choice ID and we also have a string to indicate whether it's checked or not we can actually put a bool but it's safer to put a string here okay that's the, the the choices as far as the radio buttons or the multiple choices goes now the actual answer that we wanted to put will go here as public class the answer model prop and test id all right so i'll just go ahead and copy the existing code that i already have so question id the token the list of uh, choices that the user has selected. If it's a text answer, I am putting this placeholder so that in case it's a text answer, he should be able to save the answer here and not here. In the direction, it's slightly different because uh, this is not a part of the requirement, but I'm putting it so that you will understand later on. This is, if you look at the page, we have a previous and the next button, right? Save and next. So it's a simple design. So I just put the direction inside the answer model, which is actually not supposed to be, but I have put it in. So if you wanted to uh, create a more standard and more regularized, let's say, uh, model, then you might not want to include this direction into this model. But to make it simple, I've added it here. And the last property, which is user selected ID, as you can see, it does not have a setter property. It's only a get, which means model binder will not bind it. The intention here is to get the list of only the IDs of the checkbox which were checked by the user. We will learn about this in details when we come to using it in our next video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.